Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Afiz. In this video, we are going to explore Gmail APIs with Python SDK. So first of all, why do we need Gmail APIs? Let's say you have a website or a mobile application. In that application, you want to uh, implement or integrate Gmail features. So if that is the case, then Gmail APIs are the best place to get started. Or let's say something like for your organization or for your personal interest, you want to do data analysis of Gmail. So in that case also to pull the data from Gmail, we can use Gmail APIs. So let's get started how we can connect to Gmail using APIs. So first we need to go to this URL, Python quick start. So I will share this URL in the description. So you can see over here. And the first thing we need to do is we need to enable the Gmail API by clicking this button. It will take a moment to load. So select next and desktop app and finally you can download the credentials by clicking this button i have downloaded the credential file and place that in a folder called gmail here so you can take a look at this file which is a json file after this we need to install these uh, python libraries so i have already installed them in my uh, virtual environment if you are using virtual environment please do install all these libraries inside the virtual environment otherwise if you are using I mean writing your Python programs without uh, VNV that is also fine so let's uh, copy this command I mean if you want uh, on the same browser I mean in the page so you can just copy and paste this uh, command okay so I have already run this one so that's why I'm not running it so after that uh, the Gmail or Google provides uh, the sample quick start code for accessing Gmail APIs so you can just copy paste this code from the same uh, URL okay so I will explain I mean everything here and so the first thing all this libraries so I, I hope I don't need, need to explain about all these things so these are basically the Python libraries which are used to access uh, Gmail okay and this is the very important line which is line number 14 which is scopes so the scope will provide I mean tell you which APIs you can access okay so here we have gmail dot read only so that means we have read only access to gmail okay so if you try to send email or if you try to delete any email from gmail inbox you won't be allowed okay so for doing such activities you should be having a different scope okay so we can get this uh, different scope urls from the references document so i will show you that in a moment and moving on basically i mean when we first time run uh, this application uh, it will open up the browser and it will ask the permission to allow to access our gmail okay so let's first run this program and then we will discuss about the other things when we run the program first time it will open the default browser and you will get a message like this this app is not verified you can click on advanced and you can click go to next which is unsafe that is completely fine and after that you need to choose your id and here you need to allow the access and then finally one more time you just click on allow so basically we are giving the new credentials file that we are downloaded you know, to access our gmail inbox so after that you will see a message like this the authentication flow has completed and we can close the window if we go back to our vs code and you will see a new file getting downloaded here it is and because of this file when you run the next time and we don't need to follow the procedure again so which means again the browser will open up and then again we need to give the permissions those things will be avoided if you have this file in case if you delete this file and if you run the program again it will open up the browser and it will ask for the permissions so let's uh, discuss about the program exactly what we are doing over here so as I mentioned, this is the scope, so which will basically allow, I mean, our, uh, what exactly we can do with the Gmail using this API. Okay, so that will define using this scopes. So in this particular scope, we only give read only. In case if you want to send the emails or if you want to delete emails, then the scope will be different. And those things we will see in the future classes. And here, basically, we are checking for this uh, token.pickle file, which is a file that we got downloaded just now. Okay, 
so we are checking what that file if that file is there we will load the credentials and we will check if they are valid or not okay if they are not valid or the credentials are expired then we will refresh the token and in case if there is no credentials file then we will i mean uh, pickle file then we will actually use credentials dot json which we downloaded in the first step by clicking enable gmail api okay so it will basically flow run dot local server that means uh, it will basically open up the browser for the permissions after that it will save the details in the token dot pickle file after that we are creating a service object for accessing gmail here okay so which is a build gmail in case let's say something like you want to access uh, google drive then the build will be different here so build google drive okay so maybe uh, in the future we will see that as well so after creating the service object for uh, gmail then uh, for in this particular example they are pulling all the labels available in the gmail inbox so we can see that over here service dot users dot labels and then list okay so it will pull all the labels of user me me means whatever the user id that we used to enable or to download the credentials and after that uh, so this will basically return a json object and inside that there will be a, a key called labels which will have the actual labels so that is what we are getting here and then we are printing out using this for loop here okay so again uh, the next few lines uh, we have uh, the code to pull the emails from the inbox so you can see that here so instead of using labels uh, i have used messages over here and here we will get the emails but the problem here is you will only get the email id okay so in case if you want to know actually what content inside the email like a subject line or the content or who send the email and all those details we can get using a different api call that is message.get and to that get method we need to pass this id and the user id so that uh, in that case only we will get the details of that email so we will see that in the next classes okay guys so that's it for today's class if you have any doubts please mention in the comment section below we will try to help you out see you in the next video till then take care